Opposition, David Shearer. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Prime Minister, does he stand by his statement, quote, we're trying to change the economic picture to encourage more New Zealanders to stay, and if so, how many people have migrated to Australia since he took office? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I stand by my full statement, which was, Australia has been the best performing economy in the developed world, so it's natural that some New Zealanders will ship over there, but obviously we are trying to change the economic picture to encourage more New Zealanders to stay. To the second part of the question, 170,000 people, not just New Zealand citizens, have moved to Australia since November 2008. That is uh, more than we would like, but it's a lot fewer than the 310,000 that went to Australia under Labor. The Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Mr Speaker. What has his government done to ensure that a training requirement is introduced as part of the government procurement processes, as was recommended in the 2009 Job Summit? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, the government's done a number of things in terms of lifting the opportunity for training, and that includes, I think, spending $43 million uh, in the Christchurch area. It's also established the Canterbury Skills and Employment Hub for one-stop shop for employers to list vacancies and recruit for work order. and income. The Leader of the Opposition. Yeah, Mr Speaker, that was quite a specific question around the job summit, and I would be appreciated if the uh, Prime Minister could address that part of the question. I'd, forgive me, your order. Uh, I thought the member, though, in asking his question included an issue around training. Um, I, may have, I may be wrong in that recollection. The, the, does the member wish to raise the Honourable Trevor Mallard? Um, I think what the uh, Leader of the Opposition asked was a training requirement as part of government procurement. It I let wasn't the, a general the member's question. welcome to repeat his question because I, I'm not clear on it myself. The Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Mr Speaker. What has this government done to ensure that a training requirement is introduced as part of government procurement processes, as was recommended under the 2009 Jobs Summit? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, um, specifically we don't require them to do it, but all of, uh, as I understand it, uh, employers do uh, get actively involved in that training component, and they're actively working with us in a number of areas, like the Canterbury Skills and Employment Hub is a good example. The Government also spends a huge amount of money on basically making sure that we provide training courses and apprenticeships and support uh, for youngsters. The Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Is he able to tell the House approximately how many apprentices have been created in the last year? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I don't have that number to hand, but what I do have to hand is the editorial that absolutely slammed David Shearer's ideas. Order, 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 and... order. No order. No order. The uh, question was a straight question. It doesn't deserve that. Uh, the Honourable Peter Dunn. Mr Speaker, will the Prime Minister be seeking to try and change the economic picture to encourage more New Zealanders to stay. Order, I apologise apologize to the member, but I just can't hear him because of the interjections going across the floor in front of me. I'd ask members on both sides, please, to desist so I can hear the Honourable Peter Dunn. I... Order! Now, I've just asked members to desist. Order! There's just no need for that. It's not helpful. And the member... There were, I said interjections on both sides of the House, and I asked members on both sides of the House to desist. The Honourable Peter Dunn. Your member may start again. Will the Prime Minister be trying to change the economic picture to encourage more New Zealanders to stay, as proposed in his question by the Leader of the Opposition, by implementing Mr Shearer's suggestions in Christchurch last week for curbing immigration? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, no. Um, and I, I might say that uh, a good summary of what uh, was thought of Mr Shearer's speech was in the New Zealand Herald's editorial, where they used the following words, dire, dismal, depressing, detrimental and xenophobic. And I bet you, Mr Speaker, I bet you, next time I am with Mr Shearer at some sort of Chinese order, or Asian event... Order, 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 order. That's sufficient. The Right Honourable Winston Peters. Uh, could the Prime Minister give us his mathematics, which says that the 170,000 in just on three and three quarter years, if doubled, is less than the 310,000 over nine years? Could he possibly tell us how he worked that out? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. There was nothing to work out as a statement of fact. The Leader of the Opposition. Is, oh, is point of, oh, I beg your pardon. Point of order, the Right Honourable Winston Peters. The Prime Minister knows full well what he's asked. He compared a three and three quarter year figure with a nine year figure and it's been order. found out. Order. 
Order, order, order. National members today could also be a little more disciplined. The member did ask him how he worked it out, and the Prime Minister said easily because it was a statement of fact. Now, that's the that's answer to a question, how he, how he worked it out. Uh, the Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Is the Prime Minister concerned that 17,000 tradies and technicians have left New Zealand for Australia since the earthquake, given that Christchurch is desperate for those skills in the rebuild? And if so, what concrete steps is he taking to bring them back? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, a number of things. I mean, firstly, um, as I said earlier, we've set up the Canterbury Skills and Employment Hub. Uh, we've spent uh, considerable amounts of money, or have that earmarked at least, um, for training. But, but most of all, but most of all, Mr Speaker, we're setting up an encouraging environment for people to actually want to do business in this country. We don't think the government creates jobs. We think the government creates the environment for jobs, Mr Speaker, where people put their own capital at work. And Mr Shearer would have those very companies pay a capital gains tax. That's order, what he wants. Order, order. What the uh, opposition may or may not propose is not actually the responsibility of the Prime Minister, Leader of the Opposition. Why has seven million of the forty two million for skill training in Canterbury been spent, given reports that because of the lack of skilled Kiwi workers, half of the workforce required for the rebuild will need to be brought in from overseas? The right honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr. Speaker, in terms of there was firstly a reallocation, reallocation of resources, as I understand, but whether people are brought in or not will depend partly on the time scale and the skills, but that's not unusual. In fact, successive governments, of the last time I looked in this country, have worked on a principle where there's a skill shortage. Of course, we bring people in. Actually, as the Herald editorial says, it's made New Zealand a lot better, more interesting country, and if the member wants to line up his policies, with New Zealand first when it comes to migration. Good luck. Point of order, the right on the speaker, you allowed him to have a rant and rave about a Zimbabwean dollar note, which has nothing to do with the question from the Greens, and then he had a few grabs at the leader of the uh, Labour Party. But he cannot just go on embarrassing himself, diverting his answer order. away to... Um, and away order. From... Order. I'm not sure what the member's point of order is about. The member... Order. Order. The member may have observed I stopped the Prime Minister on a couple of occasions. I don't recollect speakers during that member's most recent time in government stopping the Prime Minister on many occasions. Point of order, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Speaker, I think you did stop the Prime Minister. I think it was four times that you've stopped him uh, in answers today. Normally, the fourth offence would have some sort of warning with it. Order. I, order. I thank the member for his advice. Question number three, Scott. Oh, sorry, beg your pardon, supplementary question, Again, the Speaker, Leader of the Opposition. Is the Prime Minister more or less concerned that there are now 54,000 New Zealanders leaving a year than when he stood in Westpac Stadium in 2008 and said as Prime Minister he would give the 35,000 New Zealanders, as it was then, leaving a year a reason and a purpose for staying in New Zealand? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, obviously it depends on the reasons why they're going. Some New Zealanders are leaving to go to Australia because of the mining sector. And I noticed when we had the question from his coalition partner over there wanting to stop all mining in New Zealand dead, he didn't actually mention that would mean all miners would have to leave the country. When he goes out there telling people there's going to be a capital gains tax on every business in New Zealand, he doesn't tell them what that's going to do for their employment. So, actually, I'm pretty... Order. Order. Question number three, Scott Simpson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to...